pretty so that we can see it a little later. Welcome, my name is Lori Beth Larson and I am going to moderate our panel panelists today as we talk about the intersection of EDI and OPEN. I'm gonna to try to share my screen and go back and forth so you can see the, web, uh, the panelists as we do so. Our agenda today is the CCCOER overview. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, CCCOER, the panel discussion. We'll let you know of upcoming events and how you can stay in the loop. Our panelists today are Tanja Connerly. Would you like to introduce yourself, Tanja? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Tanja Connerly. I teach full time in the sociology department at San Jacinto College. I am also a part of the um, DEI uh, college wide committee there uh, at, at, at San Jacinto College. And I'm also the um, co vice president of EDI here for CCC OER. And I would like to welcome each of you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Shinta Hernandez, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Lori Beth. Welcome, mm -hmm. everyone. My name is Shinta Hernandez. I am a department chair of sociology, anthropology, and criminal justice at Montgomery College, which is located in Montgomery County, Maryland. We are just right outside of Washington, D.C. And I'm also, I'm vice president of professional development on the CCC OER Executive Council. And I welcome and thank all of you for being here. And uh, Santue Dawson, would you want to introduce yourself? Santue, I'm not seeing you here on my screen. She is running from one thing to the next. So let's just wait a minute. And when we see her, I'll ask her to introduce herself. Maybe Tanjo or Shinta, you could just send me a quick note if you happen to see her. All right. I am Lori Beth Larson. I am English reading faculty at um, Central Lakes College in Minnesota. And there's Asantawe. Asantawe, would you like to introduce yourself? Sorry. We can't hear you, Asantoy, yet. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yep, thanks. Um, I, let me start again. Um, I'm Asantoy Dawson. I am um, an associate professor of mathematics at Housatana Community College. Um, I teach in the first year studies department. We've been using um, OER in our math courses uh, since. I think 2015, um, and I've been a part of the CCC OER EDI work group uh, since uh, I guess last summer, summer of 2020. Thanks, and thank you to all of you for being here. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Our membership in CCC OER continues to grow. We have 94 members in 35 states. And Una mentioned the other day that we have a few members even from Canada and Hawaii in the United States. Uh, CCC OER's mission is to expand awareness and access to higher, high, high quality OER, uh, to support faculty choice and development, to foster regional OER leadership and improve student equity and success. There are a number of panels, um, a, a number of these that we work on in various groups and uh, continue to thrive and continue to grow. So let's start our questions. This first question we're asking all the panelists to answer 
and Tanja, would you mind um, going first, answering whether you believe or in your experience is open education promoting inclusive and equitable access for all? And if so, how? Um, thank you, Lori Beth. I do believe that uh, open ed is creating an exclusive and equitable access for all, but that word all, that is a large pill for us to swallow uh, because all is covering a lot of demographics. I think that uh, OER is accommodating everyone that they can possibly uh, include. So anyone with disabilities, we have accommodation for them. Anyone with um, sight or either um, reading disabilities, we have things to accommodate uh, everyone. Um, so all is a big pill to swallow because again, our population, our demographics is so huge, but we do promote an equitable uh, an inclusive uh, environment. I think that one way that we're doing this is that al allowing our students to really uh, be involved in our pedagogy, because we know the, uh, the students know what their abilities are and their disabilities are. So from there, if we can include them uh, in helping us, um, the creators, the educators, uh, include them in reference to creating our syllabus, include them in reference to um, writing assessments, uh, include them in every aspect, uh, getting their opinion. I think that in that way, we most definitely are uh, creating a more exclusive as well as equitable uh, environment. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, Shinta, you had some thoughts as well about uh, whether open ed is promoting inclusive and equitable access for all. I do, thank you, Lori Beth. And I appreciate Tanja's response because I'm in full agreement with that. Um, so I also believe that through open pedagogy, open education can most definitely promote inclusive and equitable access for all of our students across higher ed. Um, with the word all still being that hard pill to swallow as Tanja pointed out, um, I truly, believe, I do believe that when educators engage in open pedagogy, what they're doing is that they're engaging in teaching strategies that are creative, that are innovative, and it allows for social justice and for equity and for inclusion to seep into the fabric of our classroom environment. Uh, so here's a good example that I'd like to share. So open pedagogy as a concept places students at the center of their learning process in a much more engaging, in a collaborative learning environment, and that we can achieve social justice in the community at the same time. So specifically, we know that by creating and promoting open educational resources or OERs, knowledge becomes a freely available public use, but really we have to take that one step further because it's not just about cost anymore. It used to be maybe in the beginning, but it's really about that social justice and inclusivity piece to this. Open pedagogy also offers an opportunity for faculty who use OERs to have more flexibility in course redesign, as Tanja pointed out, and to be able to customize and, and customize and create the content that they believe are much more inclusive. And it creates, again, this collaborative learning environment for our students and for our faculty colleagues when they expand their community of practice and share ideas with one another on how to create that inclusive environment. So, Ultimately, yes, I do believe that it does uh, provide or promote inclusive and access, equitable access for all of us. Thank you, Chinta. And Asante, you had some um, thoughts on whether open ed is promoting inclusive and equitable access for all. Oh, yes, I definitely agree with uh, my colleagues here. Um, but I do want to go back to the issue of cost. Cost is still relevant. Um, I teach in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, in the past, our students, you know, would go through the whole semester without, especially a math and a science textbook, which are really, really expensive uh, traditionally. Uh, our materials are now uh, accessible immediately. Um, as soon as they sign up for the class, they are able to access the materials, which is huge. Um, the other piece, while um, 
I think it does promote equity, we still have some work to do. There's still uh, technology access is still remains a problem for our students. Um, accessibility um, still needs some work. Um, I think also when we think about the generation gap, um, some of our uh, older students um, are, are struggle with using um, the technology uh, that, that that comes, um, you know, free <laughs> freely uh, for them. So um, I do I do agree that it is uh, promoting equity, but I also want to make sure that I say there's room for room for improvement. Thank you. Exactly. Let me share my screen here. And Shinta, the next question we had is, how can OER creators adopt, find, and engage with culturally relevant content? And how might we find that? And I know you have some resources to share with us as well. Thanks. I do, Lori Beth. Yes. And if you don't mind moving to the next slide, I can share those resources now and I can talk about them one by one so that because I, I can tell from the chat that there are some varying levels of knowledge of OER in this Zoom space right now, some who are just beginning the OER work, some who have intermediate knowledge, and then some of you are advanced in this work. So I just want to make sure that um, I, I provide enough resources to, to help anybody, regardless of your knowledge level. So. These resources here, many of us uh, rely on, many of you even know about and perhaps even rely on, you may be familiar with this. Uh, these resources include OERs that are that I, we believe are engaging, culturally relevant and applicable across many disciplines. Um, they can meet your needs one way or another. I can, I can almost guarantee you on that one. So the first one I wanna share is the OER Commons. And this is a public digital library of OERs. And, this site's pretty neat because it allows you to explore and create and collaborate with educators around the world to help you improve your course curriculum. And also what's pretty neat about this site is there's a special link to remote teaching and learning with OER, which was actually created as a result of the pandemic. So definitely take a look at this and, and it has a lot of the culturally engaging um, materials that, uh, that can certainly meet your discipline needs. The second source I have, resource that I have on this list is Creative Commons. I think that anything you find on this site already has a Creative Commons license, which means that you know right away that, um, that it's all right to use and it can show you how you can retain and use the material. And specifically, this Creative Commons search is a tool that allows um, openly licensed work to be used by anyone, like the images that they have. They have a, a plethora of images that you can use to help illustrate the inclusive content that you're planning to deliver in your classroom. So it's, this is a great tool to, to have. The third on the list is Merlot, which I don't know if any, many of you know this, but it stands for Multimedia Educational Resource for Learning and Online Teaching. Uh, and so this site, again, also provides access to curated online learning. It's um, driven by an international community of folks, of educators and researchers. There's uh, another neat, uh, a neat thing about this particular um, Merlot is, is there's a content builder on the site that allows you to create a website so that you can host all of your inclusive course materials and have them be fully accessible. So try it out and see, see if that will fit with your, with your teaching needs and your student needs. The fourth one on the list is British Columbia Open. This site is similar in the sense that it contains those high quality online open textbooks offered in a variety of digital formats. And even though this is specific to Canada, the open education community on this site is available for all of us to use. And then even more localized is the last resource that I'm gonna share with all of you. This is what we use in the state of Maryland and it's called the Most Commons Hub, M-O-S-T, Maryland Open Source Textbook Commons Hub. Um, again, another online repository designed to support faculty and staff and it helps you discover materials. It helps you collaborate with colleagues across the state um, and contribute again to course redesign and course curriculum improvements. And I'm sure that across the country, you'll find something similar and specific to your locality. But again, you don't, you can certainly just go to any of these sites to find those culturally engaging materials. Now to answer Lori Beth's second question about um, how might we recognize biased content? One of the main questions I think you should be asking yourself is whose voice is missing? So while adaptability and affordability are two important aspects of OERs, as we've already talked about, another facet is perspective. Um, which perspectives are being taught? 
using the current course materials that you're delivering in your classroom? Are there any underrepresentation of a group of people that may impact the inclusivity of your course environment? And if so, how does this impact the student's learning process? Now, I have found that to achieve the inclusion of multiple voices, using OERs from any of these resources on the list is certainly one way to achieve that goal. Another way can be that as you're creating OERs, um, invite instructors and professionals from your discipline and across other disciplines to contribute to the creation of the OERs so that it offers those diverse voices that might be missing in your current course materials. Thank you so much. Great questions. And I had no idea about those resources. I, mean, I, had, I know some of them, but I didn't know what Merlot meant. Thanks, Shinta. So another question that we wanted to talk about was what are some ways of inviting more diverse authors and perspectives? And Tanja, I believe you were gonna speak to this. I am, thank you, Lori Beth. I'm gonna tap in a little bit more in reference to uh, uh, Dr. Shinta uh, discussing, asking our colleagues to contribute. Um, but before I go into that, I, I, I think we need to understand how important and how much work as an OER advocate, uh, the work that we're putting on our shoulders and the biggest changes that we are making um, to our colleges, uh, our um, institution, um, as well as our country. Uh, think about our publishing companies. They have a hierarchy of employees. They have textbook authors. They have sales reps that, you know, that are at your door, you know, knocking on it. Now that we're back on campus, um, but we as OER advocates, we're just basically a one-man show. Uh, we're the author of the textbook. We have to knock on the doors of our of our colleagues and ask them to be a part of this new knowledge that we're um, that we are bestowing upon our students. Uh, once we knock on the doors, you know, we are asking them, "Hey, come and be a part of this." So we're the bookseller. We're the book rep. Uh, we're all of these balled into one that a publishing company has five and six different people at different levels doing. Um, so one way that we are able to invite more diverse authors is again, um, by touching base with them, letting them, letting our colleagues know what's going on. And one of the group of colleagues that we tend to ignore are our adjunct professors. Um, I'm a part of a part-time, um, faculty advisory board at San Jacinto College. And I think 60 65% of our adjuncts uh, teach our classes. And we took a poll last year in reference to what we can do in order to make your job easier. Um, and they just said they just really want to feel like that they belong, that they belong there that that isn't hard, uh, that can be accomplished. So one way that I am inviting and asking and making sure that they're along, I'm asking our um, the uh, vice chancellor to allow me to introduce open educational resources at our new faculty orientation um, to make sure that they are most definitely aware because we automatically think that people know about us. We, 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 get, we have to stop that. So every time we see someone, you know, I even have, I even have buttons that I wear. Um, at our college, it's called Open Books, and I've created open book buttons that I wear on my very nice blazers and my dress. Uh, because again, we automatically think that people know and remember again our role. So if we continue to uh, be the bookseller, to be the book rep, I think that again, we can encourage a more diverse pool of people. And then if we do that, that means that we are going to receive a more diverse, um, uh, a diverse information that is going to basically be a part of what we're trying to promote, uh, an exclusive and equitable uh, environment. Um, so um, 
I think again, in closing that um, we all need to be commended in reference to wearing so many hats. Uh, and if we just can continue to promote uh, what the wonderful work that we're doing, I think that our diverse audience of authors and uh, will be able to grow as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanja. Some really good ideas there. Asante, when you were going to ask, uh, answer the question, how might we become more aware of our audience? Hi, yes. And I, I just uh, enjoyed what Tanja was saying about getting people involved. But I just wanted to remember, uh, remind uh, folks that you don't have to create brand new OER. Um, you can modify, you can supplement. Um, there's so many ways that you can contribute uh, to, to this um, without having to write a whole new, a whole new textbook. Um, and I think sometimes when you sell it that way, that's important. The other piece is getting your administration involved um, on your campuses. Um, you know, when you, we have a dean who's very, you know, who supports OER and, and so when, you know, the administrators support it, you know, it leads towards, you know, initiatives on campus and also um, promotion and, and there's incentives uh, there when, when, uh, when everybody, all, all the key stakeholders are involved as well. Um, but I'm supposed to talk about um, <laughs> how, how uh, to become aware of our audience. So um, one of the things uh, in teaching math, uh, math is one of those subjects that, uh, you know, people enjoy or they don't enjoy. You know, it's usually really, really extreme, not much in between. And so it's really, uh, you know, difficult sometimes to bring people in. Um, and so you, you first sort of want to, you know, recognize, you know, uh, the audience, you know, how they identify, how, you know, how you identify yourself, how they identify you. Um, you want to engage them. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, the, you learn about the, the world the students live in. Um, and you build sort of your mathematics around that. And I, I think about math and uh, oftentimes I come up with a topic, uh, we talk about numbers and we talk about sign numbers. And I always say, well, where do you use negative numbers? And it never fails. Someone says bank account. And I, I always kind of laugh, you know, um, but it is really, you know, when they make that uh, relationship, that's, that's how they understand negatives. And so when I'm teaching them or going through a problem and they're making this mistake with uh, these negatives, I use that banking example often um, because it's something they relate to. So you, you want to, you know, pay attention to your audience. Um, you also want to pay attention to nonverbal cues when, when they're getting it, when they're not getting it, uh, when you're, you know, speaking in a way that they just, you know, the language sometimes, especially with math, you know, they just don't understand. It's a lot of vocabulary involved. Um, and, and so you, you, you reword it, uh, you keep your expectations high, you um, keep teaching the content, but sometimes you, it, it doesn't have to be worded in, in, in sort of that, the old way of, of saying things. And so, um, you know, meeting your students where you are, allowing the students time uh, to learn um, is important. And you just wanna make sure you keep ensuring access uh, to, to high quality curriculum. And so with OER, as we said earlier, is that you're able to modify, you're able to supplement. And so anytime there a need arise, I'm able to add uh, content. Um, and I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about, about this work. Exactly. Excellent points. It's made me much, much better teacher. So our final question here is, what work then needs to be done? And uh, let's see, Shinta, I'll ask you first, if you don't mind, what work needs to be done? Great. Thank you, Lori Beth, for that question. So I'm going to build off of what Asanto was saying earlier about getting that administrator support. I, I speak from experience at Montgomery College. Uh, we've had such great support um, up and down and left and right. <laughs> and I think that's what has enabled us to be so successful over the last several years and allowed us to save our students 
a lot of money through our Z courses and Z degree programs. We're now at um, our savings of $8.4 million. And it just continues because we just keep adding more and more Z courses. We continue adding uh, more professional development opportunities around the work of open pedagogy and open education. So it almost um, has become like mainstream Montgomery College. And I think so much of that has to do with that administrator support. Um, but for the for anyone else who is thinking about what else needs to be done, I definitely would say um, that that kind of support can help um, provide an alignment of the work in things like the institutional strategic plan and other institutional guiding documents, because as Asanto pointed out, then you get resources, then you get funding, then you get exposure. So that's one thing. And I wasn't I wasn't thinking that until Asanto brought that up. So I appreciate that. But the other thing I did want to say is, and this is very, this is similar to what we had talked about earlier uh, between myself and Tanja, engaging students. We need to engage students more in an active way that allows them to be um, agents of change, both in the classroom as well as in the community. So for example, as Tanja had pointed out, invite those students to help redesign a course. Help invite those students to offer perspectives that we as educators would not have thought about um, and, and those perspectives are so diverse, as we can imagine, not just the usual um, racial, ethnic, gender diversity, but there could also be the age uh, background. There could also be just different educational expectations they have that we simply weren't thinking. And all of that diversity going into a course redesigning can truly um, impact, positively impact a student's learning process. Have the students be a part of your um, teaching experience and their learning process. And I'll add one more thing. Um, another way to engage students, I think, is to have them apply what they're learning in the classroom through open pedagogy and then get them to contribute back to the community through some form of service learning, experiential learning, active learning. This allows them to be more interactive and collaborative and really make a difference in their educational journeys as well as help to save the better world or to make the world a better place to live in. So thank you. Exactly. Yes, making valuable learning lessons. Uh, Tanja, you had some thoughts on what work needs to be done? I do. Um, thank, you. thank you very much, Lori Beth. Um, I know that earlier, um, one of my colleagues, I can't remember which one, did, um, spoke about the point of us having a more equitable um, environment even though OER is free, we still have students that don't have access to technology, such as laptops and Wi-Fis. Um, I am really so honored to work with OpenStax as they continue to partner with uh, technological companies in order to get free Wi-Fi for our students who are not able to have free Wi-Fi. Uh, and they're also working with other um, companies uh, to partner with them in order to create a more equitable um, LMS system as well. So we are continuing. Um, we are. We know that equitability is an issue, but we are not ignoring it. Um, again, change is a process. It is not an event. So it takes time. And I think that a lot of times we're just looking for um, instant gratification. We call it McDonaldization because you know, when you're in the line for McDonald's, uh, it takes like five minutes to get a burger. And you know, we have our computer access. So everything that we have right now, we want instant gratification. We want a response. Uh, but this is a process. You know, there are many people involved and um, many lives are, uh, are at stake because again, we are providing knowledge for our students so they can be a productive member of society. Um, so the work that really needs to be done is trying to, and I said that word all, you know, we're trying to reach the masses, we're trying to reach all, but all is such a large word. So again, we're trying to uh, accommodate as many people as possible, but again, we know that there's work that needs to be done in reference to providing accessibility to um, technology and order providing more uh, a more diverse look in reference to our society. Uh, 
looking at our textbook in a more open range. We know that, so we're aware of that. So we're looking at that, encouraging more people uh, of color to be a part of our uh, of our uh, of our committees uh, of of CCCOER. So again, I think that our we we're acknowledging that there's work that needs to be done, but again, we are progressing and trying to go in that era in that way in order to uh, make sure that the work is being done. Thank you. Thank you, Tanja. Yes, the McDonald's, I can't even say it, but it's a great word. And Asante, you had some thoughts on this and what work needs to be done. Um, so in terms of what work needs to be done, I think we need to continue uh, sort of sharing our knowledge and, and pushing this agenda of open. Um, you know, one of the benefits of reading uh, the, from Equity Talks, Equity Walk, they talked about the, the the, the, how valuable experiential learning was. And so Connecticut's in the process of, uh, I guess, adopting a new strategic plan that includes equity. And we're moving to a, a co-requisite model in math. And so working on one of the pathways, you know, where we're trying to move away from the high stake assessments of testing, but really creating assignments that are maybe semester long and incorporate uh, the content you know, throughout the semester and, and have these, uh, as calls them, the renewable assignments. Um, and I think we just need to also continue to share, you know, I, I started with sharing, but sharing these, these kinds of assignments, you know, we're looking to create this, these new experiences for students, but, you know, someone has already done some of this stuff and just making sure that we, um, let folks know where where to find this information, um, I think also can be helpful. Um, but yeah, getting out the good word. And I, I think I'm gonna get a button too <laughs> so that we can, uh, we keep growing. And then, you know, we, 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 we talk the talk, but really just walking the walk. I, I think that's something for personally, I, I need to work on um, as I keep learning and, and being involved with these groups is that now I've collected all this information um, now, now this is when the work happens and it doesn't have to happen all at once, but just a little bit at a time. And I think that that's really what needs to be done. Exactly. Yeah, buttons are good ideas. Thank you, Asantue. Yes, and you were referring to the uh, book club, the EDI book club that we had most recently, um, the Equity Talk to Equity Walk. And just to plug, there are other book clubs coming up as well. Thank you all. So we have time for questions and we do have one question here right away. Sybil asks, would you be willing to share your button design, Danja? Well, let me tell you, um, you know, you're on a budget, you know, we're on a budget. Our student engagement department literally had a button machine so I literally create a button, uh, the format of it on Word. And I literally was in the student engagement office for like two hours creating buttons so I can give it to our faculty members. So that's just something that I'm putting on my resume, button maker. Uh, so that's how I did it. I literally learned how they taught me how to make them in like 10 minutes. And I was literally in there like making buttons so I can pass them out at the faculty event. And it just says open educational resources, books are free. And Word has a template. <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea. Yes, I love OER. Um, give the button maker a raise and promotion. Excellent idea. Perfect Thank for you. a resume. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Um, here, feel feel free to uh, type them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask any questions or comments if you like. We'll wait just a couple minutes. I have a question. So I teach at um, Community College, uh, sorry, CCBC Community College of Baltimore County. And I wanted to find out, like, yeah, some of these things that you mentioned in this panel was definitely very meaningful for our students. But what are the benefits of becoming a member of CCC OER? Sure. And Shinta, 
you've been uh, with CCC OER for a number of years. Would you want to, and Tanja, I believe you all have as well. Go ahead. Absolutely. Number one benefit for me is networking and community of practice. I have, as Lori Beth pointed out, been a member for a while now, and we're now, we're friends. Um, we can call on each other, talk to each other, Zoom with one another with ideas, and, you know, we do conference presentations together. So that networking that happens so naturally as a result of this passion, common passion we have on OERs and open education has led us to where we are today, which is just continued contributions together and continued work collaborations. And um, so that for me is definitely number one. Um, Tanja, if you wanted to speak to other benefits as well. I, I, you know, we, we talk about OER, about sharing. And, you know, as Dr. Hernandez said, more than anything, it is about us sharing knowledge. Uh, you're, you know, you can start something and create something new if you like, but if you go out there and reference all the references that she showed you, there is so much information out there. It's amazing. And it just makes me so proud to say that I'm a part of an organization. Look at all that we've created. I mean, if you look at everything that we've literally created and you have people to go in and actually, you know, remix and make it their own, th that's amazing, you know? Um, and that is probably what I, the biggest benefit for me is, is, is the sharing of the knowledge because I'm always wanting to learn. And as educators, I think that, that you know, that's just in our DNA that we want to learn all the time. And this is just such a great way in order for us to continue to gain knowledge. And, um, and like you said, you can always make it your own. I love that. I love that. Yeah, thank you. And Asante, Ray, you and I are newer members. Um, as a newer member, what would you, how would you answer that? What are the benefits of being with CCC OER? Uh, oh, there's so many benefits. Um, you know, I had been using OER for, for years, um, not as familiar about things like open pedagogy, you know? And so being a part of the group, I've just learned so much, how much more out there there is to learn. Um, and then uh, these folks are, they're, they're, they're the experts in the field. And, and, you know, if I need something, Una can give me a resource <laughs> in a heartbeat, which is very valuable. Um, so I, I think, you know, that's, that's uh, what Shinta said, networking is important. Um, you have uh, people to call on um, uh, that, that have all the information that, that you need. Yeah, I, I would agree with what you just said. There's a question here. Uh, Sybil asks, if someone creates a resource that has more diverse vo voices in it than other OER textbooks, how could one promote that? Um, she also says, should we sell the book by saying six out of 10 student examples are by people of color and those in the LGBTQIA community or student examples in this book are not from dead white guys? Let's see, anyone want to yeah, have some ideas on that one? Promoting, I think promoting more diverse voices, Tanja. Um, that's a good question. Um, so promoting, more diverse voices. I think that again, um, if you, if your college or your or your university is not promoting diversity, um, take it a step at a time. Uh, you always have. We always have department meetings, so talk about it in your department meeting. From there, your department meeting, you'll probably go to another meeting. Go talk. Find a way to promote it there. Uh, in reference to uh, OER. Um, and at one point, somebody's going to get tired of hearing you talk all the time and there's no action. So I 
and and as long as you have the facts behind you, you know, it's not like we're just saying, you know, these things that OER works without really numerical value. So I always take some form of data with me that says that during the pandemic, you know, we have had, we've saved this amount of money or, you know, over this amount of time, we've saved this amount of money. So I think that um, one way uh, that we can promote uh, the diverse voices is to basically, you know, start from the bottom, you know, go to, go to somebody that's next door to you, go to your department meetings and talk about it. Um, and people are always at, um, at a loss in reference to, you know, is it okay for me to talk about this? If it's within your, if it's within your vision statement, or if it's within your, uh, goals within your college or your institution, it's okay for you to talk about it. It's okay for you to talk about it. Excellent. Yes. I agree. Um, there's another question here that says a lot of campus wide work hinges on administrator support. What advice do you have for campuses just joining the movement and don't necesarily have the support and resources needed? I can speak to that, Lori Beth. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Thank you. Um, in fact, actually, uh, not the administrator support part, but when I first became a department chair five years ago, um, we were we had just received the Achieving the Dream grant on creating Z degrees. And so as a new department chair with a department that was, I don't want to say anti-OER, but when you know when you we experience change, everyone kind of hesitates a little bit. So we're all kind of new to that, um, relatively speaking. And one of the things that I did was I quote unquote piloted the pr program. So I, I oversee two campuses at Montgomery College in sociology, anthropology, and criminal justice. So what I decided to do was take the smaller campus and put in, a, uh, make those courses OER based courses, Z courses, and then survey the students separately from the course evaluation that we normally do at the end of the semester. And, and eventually I saw the data and it was all promising data. So, uh, we had a bunch of questions that um, we adopted from the ATD survey as well as questions of my own. And I had faculty to help me with this. So there, that's another component is faculty champions who will work with you. And when we saw that the data was very promising, I scaled it up to the other campus and the other campus, a much larger campus, twice the size. And then once I did that and the, the student success rates continued to go up across the campuses, I was then able to show it to other department chairs and other people who, um, who either are champions of OER or not as much and just say, hey, look, it's working. And then through the grant, we also saw um, positive differences in other disciplines as well. So I say, start small if you're starting brand new to this work, um, gather the data, get survey data, get anecdotes um, from faculty, staff and students, and then work from there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Santa, did you have, um... You, did you have anything to say on getting administrator support? For uh, I think Shinta, uh, hit, you know, hit, mm -hmm. hit on it. You, you really need to present the data. Um, it's almost like our state is adopting this correct model. Why are we doing it? Because the data says it works. Um, you know, I think you know, enough is around, especially through ATD about uh, OER that you can get information and you, you sell it like, hey, students are completing, students are persisting, right? These are the things that uh, colleges wanna hear. And um, yeah, you just keep, you know, you sell it to one person and hopefully it grows from there. Um, you do have people who resist, you know, either they've had negative experiences with, um, you know, with, with making their work free um, or you know, some of the textbooks, don't necessarily cover exactly what you want. Um, and, and it does require sometimes a little bit of work, a little bit of modifying. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when students are able to access the book, um, you're able to teach, you know, and the learning happens. So I, I think, uh, yeah, just follow the data uh, would be my advice. Yeah. Excellent. 
Uh, let's let's take a look at this next question, and I am afraid I don't I don't know. Has anyone compiled or raised books? resources which comes for an idea perspective anywhere anywhere do you have some thoughts on that tanja well i would like to um define exactly from an idea perspective can you elaborate on that because i'm not familiar with an idea perspective Let's see, that's Shagun. It's Shagun here too. Was that a typo or is it, if you could just explain an idea perspective, I will be more than happy to try to attempt to answer that, but I don't know what an idea perspective is. Shagun just yeah. put it in the chat. So idea stands for inclusion, diversity, equity, anti-racism. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. I have a new acronym now. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Got a new acronym. I will be using that in class. I love that. Um, that is the reason why we, in our summer book club, we did from equity talk to equity walk. And unfortunately, we did have to utilize a book. Well, there's, I should say fortunately, but unfortunately, we did have to utilize a book that was not an uh, open educational resources, but uh, because we didn't have a, a particular one that was addressing um, the uh, the diversity that we were looking for, uh, discussing equity. Uh, so that is the reason why we had to utilize from equity talk to equity walk. But if you have something in mind, I can tell you that you will have a lot of people who would love to partner with you in order for us to get something out and uh, about this topic uh, from open educational resources. So if you, like I said, if you have something in mind, hint, hint, we would love to partner with you. Uh, so our contact information will be at the end of our presentation today. So, um, uh, again, that, that's the reason why we had to go from equity talk to equity walk, because unfortunately, right now, we do not have anything from uh, anything concrete. Unless Una, I know you're here. That's our guru of knowledge. Una, are you aware of anything um, that is uh, that targets this perspective um, that would be a good starting point? I know we have our anti-racism uh, information. I know we have a whole thing on that, uh, that UNA is, that CCC OER is working on. We have all of that on our website. So that would be a good start for you as well. Mm -hmm. And Tina Mullins just added uh, a oh, short great. list of OER for IDEA. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, great. But that I know that we have our, oh, I know we have our anti-racism anti-racism platform on CCC OER website. Uh, so that can give you a, a great start. And then Tina just uh, put something here. And so that's what OER is about, sharing. Thank you, mm -hmm. Tina. And speaking of that, Wade Oshira just said, you don't have to be in a member to, tend, to attend excellent CCC OER webinars, um, but membership gives your institution additional networking and leadership. It's worth the price. And so uh, I wanted to get to just one question. Um, Asanta Wei, you alluded to free software support. Um, do you have any thoughts on where free courseware might be headed? Uh, I have no idea where it's headed. We use uh, my open math for a learning management system. Um, you know, sometimes in terms of like graphing calculator and stuff, we supplement with Desmos. Uh, I don't know where it's headed though. Uh, we just try to make sure that, you know, students can get the work done. Um, and those, uh, Open Map is great for homework and, and it's a management system. So you can set it up almost like a Blackboard course. Um, and they, they, they keep modifying, which I think is great. Um, it's definitely improved since I first started using it. 
Um, is it Pearson's product? No, but it, uh, it, it's still comparable. Um, so, I mean, that's what I use. And I know there's some other ones out there. I just, at the top of my head, can't think of it right now. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the Liz just made mention too as well that there's a EDI book club um, that can be found on the CCCOER EDI's blog post. That's a lot of acronyms. All right, any final thoughts? Um, any other questions? Jonathan asks, does anyone want the domain idea for oer.org uh, he bought it last year and he'd be happy to give it out talk about sharing <laughs> any other thoughts i saw you had your hand up shakur and then it went down oh there elaine wants it <laughs> Sold to the site to the uh, highest bidder. Any other questions we have here before we start finishing up? Any final thoughts, Shinta? Uh, no final thoughts other than I really appreciate all of you being here and sharing some really good information on the chat as well as raising some very thought-provoking questions. So thank you so much for all of that. Thank you. And Tanja, any final thoughts? No final thoughts, but I really want to um, thank you for attending. Uh, and I really look forward to uh, continuing to share more information, well, us sharing information with each other uh, to uh, continue our um, journey and our plight in reference to open educational resources. Thank you. Thank you. And Asante, why any final thoughts here? No final thoughts. Just again, thank you for you know listening to us and um, sharing sharing with us as well uh, the resources I see popping up in the uh, in the chat. Exactly. So let me share our final uh, final um, ideas here. We do have another webinar coming up on December 8th, which will be a fascinating one. It's a student panel on the impact of OER. And uh, Liz, I see a question on when we, when the chat and recording come out. Please uh, take a look at the community email. It's an incredibly uh, busy email, very useful, CCC oer.org community dash email. Uh, there are a number of EDI blog posts and student OER impact stories on the cccoer.org. And you can look under the tab, getting involved uh, to stay in the loop. Here are contact information for uh, Liz and for Una and the CCC OER staff. And uh, yes, when we have the recording, the, e the emails for uh, Shinta, Tanja, and Asantewe are also, um, will be at the beginning of that recording. Thank you, everybody. Um, anything else to add here, uh, Liz, as we finish up? No, thank you. Just to let people know if they want to save the chat, they have to do that manually, but I will be um, emailing a link to the recording and the slides out to everyone who registered.